in this video I will show you how I replace the bathroom lights for, for us and this is a warning here, you should not try this at home, you should call an electrician if you think that you might do this and you try to do it, it's, you're trying this at your own risk, there is a dangerous electricity here and you might really injure yourself if you do anything wrong there or cause any damages, so it's up to you if you if you try it you try it at your own risk you should call an electrician to do this for you this is the old cfl light fluorescent lights and as you can see the they flicker a lot these are the regular tube cfl lights fluorescent fluorescent lights the power consumption on these ones it's about 18 v watts for each tube and the most annoying thing about them is that they blink like this when they start and I tried changing the starter doesn't really do anything I tried changing the lights they run okay for a while but it, um, it always there's always some issues and there is also the flickering they flicker a lot I mean as you can see there's some crazy amount of flickering going on there as usual these fluorescent lights they are like this so no matter how good the lights you get there there's always going to be flicker there and i wanted to get rid of the flickering so i also wanted to reduce the power consumption of these lights from 18 watts and it's two two uh, light tubes there so that's going to be 36 36 watts 18 18 watts times two so i got this one this is uh, 20 watts in total about the same power as the original one and okay a plus plus i'm not sure about that it's 20 kilowatts hour per 1000 hours the brand, I don't know if you can find it somewhere else, but usually the brand doesn't really matter. Whatever is local available, it works fine. This one is 2000 lumen. The color temperature is important. Uh, the lower the, the number, the warmer the light. 2700 is really warm. 4000 is more appropriate for the bathroom. There is a seal on one side, but no seal on the other side of the box, so that's interesting. Yeah, this is the brand. It's Sunlight. This is uh, it's uh, just uh, another brand name for uh, the this uh, manufacturer. But uh, Philips, if you find Philips, those are really good. Any any brand really, if you can find the the fixture separate and the LED tubes that also works you can also convert the old fixture to LED tubes but I, I was really I didn't want to mess with the conversions and all that and also the price for this was the same as uh, two LED tubes so it didn't make sense to keep the old fixture anyway and uh, it's nice to have a new new light in the bathroom most important thing here is to have a, a way to check for the power and i have this electrician screwdriver that when i touch it on one of the live wires it will light a small lamp inside if there is a live current on it live uh, voltage the live neutral and ground wires from from what I remember, brown is the live, blue is the neutral, and the yellow and green is the ground. Feel free to correct me in the description. And again, don't try this at home. Really, you can really hurt yourself with this if you do it wrong. Also, it's very important that these uh, screws, when they are tightened down to to tighten the cable, that they are, are tight. No, no wire should be loose here because it can uh, create resistance and uh, get hot. It could create damages. So 
it's very important to have all the cables really tight. Most important is to turn off the power completely, not just from the switch, but from the mains. Make sure you check that the lights are really off. And also make sure that you don't let anyone re, re start the power on the circuit breaker. It should be always off. If you can't see it, you should lock it with something just to make sure that it doesn't uh, hurt you. These are 18 watts T8 size 1300 lumens each. So the total is uh, 2600. The power on this one is a bit more than the new LED, but it's fine. I'm checking here with the screwdriver all these blue and brown wires trying to make sure that there's a small lamp in the screwdriver doesn't light up here I made a mistake here I didn't actually show you that the lamp in the screwdriver works this is important to make sure that the that screwdriver shows you when there is a power just in case the screwdriver doesn't work so yeah, this is, uh, that's why you should call an electrician for this, so they install it for you. This is the old ballast for the CFL lights with the starter and everything. It's a 20 volt, 20 volts, 18, 18 watts, 0 0.37 amps. Remains power 240 volts. So I'm gonna remove this one. First, I remove the connections. It has, I guess yours will be completely different. This is just one example. But you have to find where the, the wires from the wall come out into the fixture and disconnect those with the, just a simple screwdriver, electrician screwdriver insulated. And uh, you don't have to touch the wires. I mean, at some point, okay, if you touch them, and the power is off, nothing will happen, but it's better not to, I mean, it's better to avoid it. So now the wires are coming out one by one. The dangerous wires here are the brown and the blue. Both of them are dangerous and you should uh, not touch them, especially if the power is on. The green, green and the yellow are it's for ground to have a way for electricity for the power to go to ground instead of uh, damaging your uh, equipment or hurting you. Now the feature is coming out and uh, yeah in this case there was just a hole it's the old one I'm going to reuse these holes no need to make new ones especially the new feature is very easy to adjust checking the wires make sure everything is okay and this is how this fixture is installed but uh, in your case it could be completely different I can say one thing if you change it make sure you get the same kind of shape that the old one was so it's easy like this when you when you upgrade it you don't have to change too many things you just put the new one in there and it's uh, all fine this this one had the uh, sleeve. I have to put the sleeve on the wires. It's uh, for safety, I guess. So I will put this. Uh, install it as it uh, as it's required from the instructions in the manual. And each fixture they will have different ways of connecting. Some of them I've seen the IKEA ones. They have. A very nice and no tool required clicking play system where you just open the connector and it the cable clicks in i like that actually that's pretty nice but if you have to use a screwdriver it's no big deal as long as you keep the wires tight there some kind of interesting system to hold the wires in there uh, really tight pretty good like this so to make sure that they don't uh, touch anything from the outside maybe I should have tried to put these wires inside that uh, junction box but okay the old ones they were not like that very important blue has to go to blue uh, yellow and green to yellow and green and brown goes to brown 
if you have another color system, you should follow the, the colors that you have. Usually, you just have to match the colors. In, in my case here, uh, it was a bit difficult to put this. And I didn't notice that the old fixture also had a small gap above there. So I was trying to cover the gap, but later I realized that I couldn't. But still, it was uh, more or less set up, and I saw that there was a hole there. I don't know, I decided to put a bit of electrical tape above it, just a little bit, and lifted the, um, these fixtures just a little bit higher. And, okay, maybe I shouldn't have lifted it too much, but, yeah, I can always change it later. I was really trying to adjust it. While adjusting it, these clips, they got really got out of shape, so I had to make them, sh make them back how they were, so it clicks back into place. Using that tape I showed you earlier, I just uh, cut with the scissors, small uh, piece of the tape, and I will put it on top there. Yeah, now I arrange the clips, so you can lock easily. And you see with the tape, I'm not sure if this is a good idea. There is still a bit of air, free air on the bottom from this. So let me know in the comments below if you think that's a bad idea, if I should remove it. It's not really visible from how you use it. And the light is fine. It's not flickering at all. The color is... 4000 is really great for the bathroom, the 4000 color temperature Kelvin, it's not yellow, but it's not cold white, like really cold, it's just a nice color, all I have to say. I waited to remove that until the last moment, just to make sure that I don't scratch it or anything, it doesn't really matter if it's scratched, but yeah, why not keep it there. Give this video a thumbs up if you think this is interesting and let me know in the comment section below if you replaced your uh, fixture and how you did it, the, the steps, if there was something important. If you want to share something with someone who wants to try this or you want to tell them not to try it, write in the comments section below. Most important here, the power is on instant without any flickering, no blinking at the beginning, nothing. And um, that's really important because it's really most of the LED lights now these days are like this and uh, the power is half so the bathroom gets used quite a lot so using half of the power in the bathroom why not and having a better quality light the cost of the fixture it's not very expensive, so it's really, I believe it's really worth it to change it. So if you have, if you still have fluorescent lights in your bathroom, you might think about changing it to LEDs. Depending on the quality of the LEDs, you, you will get a really good light and very a lower power consumption. I will put links in the description with the, the fixtures that you might have available in your area. And let me know in the comment section below which is your favorite light fixture if you have a favorite brand usually the fixture is not really from a brand but the the tubes the led tubes are important thanks for watching subscribe like and share and i will see you next time bye